Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A Rapid City man is expected to plead guilty to child pornography. According to court documents, 71-year-old Gary Heckel had tens of thousands of illegal files on his hard drives. Along with illegal pictures and videos of children, the federal document says the images also included bestiality. Heckel is scheduled to enter a guilty plea at the federal courthouse tomorrow. When he's sentenced, he faces up to 20 years in prison. Arguments have just wrapped up for the South Dakota Supreme Court involving one of the people involved in the shooting death of a pizza delivery driver in Sioux Falls back in February of 2020. Raymond Banks is serving a 60-year sentence for his role in the killing of Casey Bonhorst. But Banks' attorney argues that results of a polygraph exam should have been submitted as evidence during his sentencing hearing. Find out why coming up tonight on Kelloland News. Along with the population increase in Sioux Falls came an increase in crimes like aggravated assaults. But city officials say it's repeat offenders who are committing the majority of those crimes. The new violent crime unit with the Sioux Falls Police Department hopes to target that issue. The unit of eight detectives and one sergeant officially began at the end of January as a merger between the narcotics unit and street crime unit. Captain Michael Koval says the unit has already made an impact. I mean, it's been less than two months that they've been out there working together. Uh, they really started to form a cohesive unit and make an impact in the, in the community. Um, they've taken numerous guns off of the street already, and they've made several arrests. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, Lauren Solik will tell us more about the new violent crime unit. She also looks into the impact of reoffenders on victims of assaults. It isn't the weather, but a water issue that's shutting down Sioux Falls High School. According to a message from the principal, Washington dismissed students at noon today because the school had no water and the bathrooms couldn't be used. Turning to weather, Scott, those snow piles outside are shrinking bit by bit. It's tough to not notice uh, <laughs> that progress. Bit by bit, you put it a good way, not leaps and bounds, no, right? No, we'll take bit Slow by bit. Slow melt. Though. Right. Yep. That's, that's what we need, and that's what we are uh, continuing to see as we do go forward. Now, tomorrow will be a warm day. You may notice uh, a rapid inc increase in that melting, and I think we will across the southern half of the area with temperatures in the 40s and 50s. It will remain colder in north central and northeastern South Dakota tomorrow. Now, in the meantime, today, temperatures, yes, below average, 20s, 30s. Some of us may hit the 40s. With high pressure overhead, that will move to the east and to the southeast. Once we get on the backside of that, meaning that's over to our east, we'll eventually start to see southerly winds. There may be a couple of stray flurries from time to time, still trying to hold during the early afternoon. You see them just to the south of Mitchell. Uh, these are showing a weakening trend for this morning. So, excuse me, early afternoon now. So a lot of these will eventually go away. You see our visibility in Aberdeen down to three miles, uh, seven miles for visibility in Mobridge, and that's a look at our live cam in Aberdeen. Temperature at 13 degrees. We have a southwest wind at six miles per hour. Over the next 12 hours on Futurecast, it looks to stay dry, and we'll go with dry skies for tomorrow. Slight chances for light rain or light snow as we go through this coming weekend. Temperature in Sioux Falls is 28. We have 28 in Mitchell and in Pier, 29 in Rapid City. And you see the colder air across northeastern South Dakota. And winds are light at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Forecast for today, high of 34 in Sioux Falls, 30 in Brookings, 32 in Mitchell. We'll try to hit 40 today in Pier and 44 in Rapid City. Tonight, numbers fall to the teens and 20s. And for tomorrow, as we've been mentioning, it should be a warmer day, and it will be a warmer day. Highs in the 30s, 40s and 50s. I'll have more details on your forecast along with Megan coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Scott. March Madness picks back up today with a sweet 16. The marquee matchup is out west with two seed UCLA facing three seed Gonzaga. Tomorrow, the two remaining one seeds, Alabama and Houston, will try to survive in advance while 15 seed Princeton hopes the clock doesn't strike midnight on its Cinderella. We're waiting to see if a Manhattan grand jury will decide to indict former President Donald Trump. Sources tell CBS News their work is nearly done. This comes as a federal grand jury meets on a different case in Washington, looking at whether the former president mishandled documents marked classified. CBS's Jared Hill reports from New York. The waiting game resumes today in Lower Manhattan to see if a grand jury indicts former President Donald Trump. It's investigating a payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels, which former Trump fixer Michael Cohen claims Trump authorized in 2016. Because Mr. Trump has always had a reputation for having a rather 
loose relationship with factual accuracy. Uh, so if he calls this legal expenses when it is in fact hush money, I can certainly see why that could violate a New York statute. Trump, who is running for president in 2024, has remained defiant and denies any wrongdoing. Just a continuation of the most disgusting witch hunt in the history of our country. Sources tell CBS News Trump is considering holding a news conference outside the court in New York if he is indicted. Once witness testimony wraps up, prosecutors will formally present the charges they're seeking. Then they'll ask the jurors to vote. Grand juries generally do what the prosecutor asked them to do. There's also been a development in the separate investigation into the former president's handling of documents marked classified. A federal appeals court has ordered Trump lawyer Evan Corcoran to testify about his communications with Trump concerning the handling of classified materials. Corcoran is expected to appear before that grand jury meeting in Washington on Friday. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Among the evidence, he's expected to share documents and private audio files that could shed some light on what Trump said before and after the FBI searched Mar-a-Lago last year.